guys and welcome to my channel if it is your very first time tuning in thank you so much for finally stopping by my name is Mbumi Lobo and I create videos for your viewing a pleasure please make sure that you subscribe to my channel so that you can also become an ultimate fave I know that you might be shy you know but don't worry we don't bite people around here we love brand new faces this is a safe space so please make sure that you subscribe to my channel i know it's for free um also make sure that you watch this video until the very end and give it a very big thumbs up and uh, drop me a comment if you can so you know today i want to speak about something that has been making waves around um the world and our nation and everything in jay in general you know um and that is racism and i want to give you my take on racism in higher learning institutions unfortunately i can't really speak or say which you know university i'm attending because i'm still trying to get the degree <laughs> however you know i will say that racism is real like it is very evident especially if you are um attending like i said a predominantly you know white university and you see these things every single day so you know the past few days for me have just been like triggering but also i'm just like wow actually it's actually happening you know i think sometimes i forget you know or because i've been in that space for so long i just i've i've found a way to to block it out you know i've 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 just found a way to to sort of not deal with it because I'm just surrounded by it so much that I've I've blocked it out so that it doesn't affect me as much as it does. By the way, I'm shooting outside, so if there are some noises, then I'm really sorry. Um, however, this is the best place for lighting. Our house is dark. So anyway, um, yeah, like as I was saying, racism is very serious. Like, uh. When I think about, firstly, children who are in res, um, rather students who are in res, sorry, um, and, you know, the kind of messages that they receive, like, you know, everyone's on WhatsApp, right? And, because it's the easiest, like, form of communication, and you'll see, like, the messages that they send them are in Afrikaans, and for them, it's like, everyone understands Afrikaans, like, it's normal, you know, Afrikaans is, like, your first language and if you don't understand afrikaans it's like you're weird you know like who doesn't understand afrikaans you know you came into this um institution because you knew it was predominantly afrikaans so you know you're supposed to speak afrikaans and i've seen how systematic it is um even with the people who make it in res like if you're a black person and you stay in res you probably went to a water school or your marks were really really high or it's just luck literally because one thing that i've seen is that they want to keep their traditions in check you know and if you don't speak afrikaans or you don't want to understand afrikaans or you don't understand it at all it's a problem to them you know how are you going to understand the songs that you guys are supposed to sing and their culture because that's very important for them white people are very good at preserving their culture and if you are gonna come and try to go sideways they will eliminate you very quickly they are not about that life they stand together for what they believe in and I think racism thrives in my university like I promise you that place is just like it's made for white culture it's so easy for you to move around when you are white in that institution it's a friendly environment it's a it's a great environment you love it you know and this is not just happening in race it's happening in, in class as well i mean i know with my course i'm like when we started it was just like the four of us who were black you know three black girls one black boy and you know the messages would be sent in Afrikaans and you know the conversations would be in Afrikaans and the jokes would be in Afrikaans and you know sometimes you, you sit in class because we use translation services so you sit in class and you know sometimes maybe like let's say the translator is late or something was wrong with like the translation services or you know they had like a battery problem like technicalities small technicalities so then maybe the lecturer 
they would just like warm up the class by like saying a couple of jokes would be like if there's any questions that you have about the work while we wait for the translation services you know maybe we can address those now you know like just small admin and you know someone would like speak i mean the lecturer was speaking of in english you know address the the class in english and then after that you know one white person would be like um ask his doctor and then you know they're just gonna carry on and they forget it's so easy for them to forget that you know there are black people in the class and um you know they'll end up speaking the afrikaans and then you know someone will make a joke and then it's kiki and haha and you guys are just sitting there like awkward taking up space cementing yourselves you know but you don't understand what's going on and it's not funny for you because you don't get the joke and you know like at first it really gets to you i don't want to lie you know the first few months it gets to you and then after a while it's like listen man i don't i don't give a shit i don't care but then you know that is so sad because you end up not liking your environment you know it's not a conducive environment to work in you you just you end up being that person who gets to class you attend the lecture content session if you have questions you will wait until the lecture is done and then go ask the lecture on your own and then after that you leave there's nothing for you i mean what are you what are you doing there you know because you as a black person are made to feel like you're less than just because you don't know how to communicate in afrikaans you know it even happens with presentations you get to class you know we're doing a presentation so you know sometimes like i said there are technicalities you know small technicalities to deal with in terms of like translation services and then umundu will start the presentation of wow um i know with my course like the lecturers have always sorry encouraged that everyone does their presentations in english because like our last year our fourth year is like in, in english so in any case and you're going to be working with the community most of the time because it's like health science so you might as well you know do your stuff a favor and learn how to speak english fluently and you know the girlies will get there and their presentation is beautiful and they'll start off so well like good morning everyone my name is so so and so um and you know my presentation today will be on xyz and then and then after a while you know have one hiccup and i said this on twitter as well have one hiccup and then they'll just carry on in other gods and you're like why you know why can't you just like find the word like we will help you be there after all you know and then don't carry on enough guns and by that i mean by then you've lost me you know i i'm no longer interested in what you have to say because clearly i'm not the target market you know i'm not i'm not i'm not i'm not the person that you're trying to address you know you're not trying to get my attention if you're not even going to try and meet me halfway by speaking you know a language that i can understand um english is not my mother tongue and i have to you know get myself to a point where i speak it fluently just so that we can understand each other so i'm already meeting you halfway but now you want me to speak your language like afrikaans is like a third language it's not even a third language if i think about it because my parents are a mixture of Tswana and Zulu, you get what I mean? So technically, Afrikaans would be my fourth language, you get what I mean? But in any case, I'm already meeting you halfway. The least you can do is try and speak English as well. But one thing I, I've noticed about white people is that it's very difficult for them to compromise. You know, a privilege to them is like, oh my word, like I need to, 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 to be treated in a certain manner they love comfort and that's the reason why there's so many of them in my university because it, it, it's just one of those universities that accommodates um actually i shouldn't say accommodates them it, my university accommodates us my university accommodates black people people of color you know it, 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 being in my uni it's made for white people it's it's an environment that's made for them to thrive you know even the way they speak to lecturers even the way you know everything around potch is situated it's so amazing for them because that environment just allows them to thrive you know every shop 
in in in, in Poch has um, Afrikaans people. You know, every restaurant in Poch has Afrikaans people. Um, I remember I once applied for a job at a certain restaurant, and they told me that um, they don't have like open vacancies. I remember I had like a small interview when I, you know, submitted my my what's this. Anyway, <laughs> I remember I submitted my CV and that guy asked me, the manager, he was like, can you speak Afrikaans fluently? <laughs> How about no? You know, and I remember he was like, they're not hiring at the moment. And I remember, I think two, three weeks later, I saw someone new there and I knew that the reason I didn't get that job is because I'm going to speak Afrikaans fluently and, you know, my hair is not, you know, like aligned with their brand. So that's the reason I didn't get the job. Um, and there's just so many instances. Like if I were to speak on each and everything that I've experienced there, I would not finish this video, you know, um, even with just like if you need a place to stay, like if you call and you're like, um hello uh my name is and you speak afrikaans and you address your agent in afrikaans they'll probably try their hardest their best to get you the best deal you know according to your budget um but if you're black it's like oh we don't have those places around here um but what you can do is you know we can we have a commune and it's about 2.5 kilometers which is not that far from campus and um and water and electricity is included and you can pay 2.5 you know 2.9 um which is still very good but if someone else called you know who spoke the language and was a little more paler than me then they would get the best deal and i'm not speaking like I'm not lying on this. They it's literally a friend of mine who wanted a place and okay, this place was far from campus, but it was a beautiful place. But when the deal was made, it was done by her father who is colored. And obviously, you know, he spoke Afrikaans, whatever. And she just came in when she was moving in and i remember she told me she's like when that white woman saw me and realized that i was not white i was a person of color i could see that she was really disgusted and mad that i was moving in and i was just like look at the material you know and so many instances like no one cares you know um and it's really sad um, how those people move, you know, because even when you get your marks, you start to wonder, am I getting bad marks because I really didn't understand or I didn't do this assignment to the best of my ability or am I getting bad marks because, you know, I'm not, I'm not right, you know, um, even just having a relationship with lectures, I don't have relationships with my lectures, I don't want to I pursue any relationship with any of them because I just don't feel comfortable you know like I'm not saying that we should be friends or anything but they're not people that I would go to and look for like or seek help rather um, from because I just feel like they just wouldn't understand you know they they just don't get my struggles they don't get where I'm from you know they don't get how you know things are for me and i just i would i wouldn't want to, to 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 find any solace in them and it's really sad because you see that you know with white kids you know they can develop a sort of like a, a very friendly relationship you know with lecturers um because they all speak the same language they all they get each other you know like but with us it's just like it's never really it's it's difficult you know everything is difficult everything is uncomfortable everything is just you know you you constantly walking on eggshells because you don't know if you're saying the right thing or if you're saying the wrong thing and even with the whole befriending white girls or white boys it's not as easy as everyone thinks it is you know because when you speak on such matters um 
some of them get offended that oh but i'm not racist and it's like i'm not saying that you're racist i'm just trying to make you understand my position and you know my experience and you know what i'm feeling and you're not gonna see it because you don't live by my side you know you don't understand the kind of privilege that you have and that's the reason why you won't understand what i'm talking about and one thing i've also noticed about certain white people is that they don't like befriending girls or boys who don't know how to speak afrikaans i mean if you're not like savored afrikaans and you don't know how to speak afrikaans properly they're not going to befriend you because now they have to stretch themselves you know like i'm, I'm a bunu if you greet them in Afrikaans, like, hey, who are you? Who you? You know, like, they're so vibey. But as soon as you're going to say, Saubona, it's going to be like, oh, you know, Saubona. You know, it's, it's, it's like, what are you saying? You know, they, they, they don't like befriending mm -hmm. people who are going to make them work hard. You know, they like befriending people who understand their culture, like I said earlier, who understand, you know, what they're about, their music, you know, how they party, everything. They like that because then they, they don't have to do a lot of work, you know, because you're going to constantly speak Afrikaans with them all the time. While well, they never try and even attempt to learn your language and, you know, what your cultural beliefs are and what you're about. They don't, they don't have to do that. They don't have to stretch themselves. And that's why they don't like to do it. So if you see, well, what I've seen is that most of these black people who befriend white people is because they, they grew up with white culture and they understand white culture. And it just makes it easier for their friends to, you know, kiki and haha with them because they don't have to say, um, translate everything. You know be it jokes be it phone calls any none of that they don't have to do that they don't have to work the extra mile you know it's just about them 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 and happiness that's just what it is and it's really like it's bad it's horrible you know i would not recommend anyone to go to my university zero stars not even one star out of five zero because it's just not an enjoyable experience for a black person. That is that on that. Like, there's no other way to go about it. I feel that maybe if I was in another institution, maybe I would be happier. I don't know. But, you know, even this lockdown for me, it's been a blessing in disguise. I don't want to even lie. I'm so happy. I'm like, oh, I don't have to speak Afrikaans. I don't have to listen to Afrikaans. I don't have to read anything in Afrikaans. I'm glad. I'm happy. And... I've had enough i don't want to be in that environment anymore and it's made me see white people you know in a different light and this is not me saying that all oh, white people are racist but i'm just like i'm tired you know like i don't see them the same way and it is what it is um so yeah that's where i'd end, like to end off the video um i think one thing that i do like about white people that black people should adopt is supporting each other white people put each other on they love each other they support each other they stand strong in their beliefs i remember there was like a what is it there was a there was a statue um in in, in our university premises that you know was just like racist and it it, it was bad vibes if i can put it like that and there was a petition to remove it and the white people in my campus did not want to hear anything about it they literally stayed the entire night <laughs> they stayed the entire night guarding that statue yeah you understand what it did next no person would come and you know take the statue away how dare you you know they, they they stood together maybe the following day you have a test or an assignment but then see just to make sure that they they you know they hover around or hover around the statue to make sure that no one removes it and they were there um so they stand together and black people don't you know when one person fights for something it's like oh okay so you're a revolutionist you do that on your own. We will enjoy the benefits. Like, we don't support each other the way that we should. We should stand together. Strong. Stronghold. 
um, to ensure that you know we remove this um, energy because it's really bad and it's not nice and I don't want to have my grandchildren make a YouTube video out of this you know years from now speaking of the same thing we really need to change the way you know we see the world and our perspective on things anyway that's when i that's when i'm gonna leave it thank you so much for uh joining me and watching this video please make sure that you give it a big thumbs up and i'll see you in my next video until then stay hydrated and keep on minding your own business